Robin, when you're ready. Hi. Emma. Hi. When I um, meet with somebody, I choose to be open with them. I choose to uh, share what I'm feeling and thinking openly and to connect with that person. But sometimes the person I'm talking to does not like what I'm saying or does not accept uh, me. And then there's a feeling of hurt that arises. And then there's a tendency on my part to sort of want to withdraw, to not be so open the next time. And um, I know that intellectually, if I accept everyone and everything then there is no hurt but still this pattern continues um how how should i deal with it let me ask you this first <clears throat> how do you know that how do you know that people some people don't accept you or like you well I'm interpreting that because of what, how they're responding to what I'm saying. So let's be clear then that they don't like what you're saying <clears throat> rather mm. than your, your, your mind is automatically assuming that they don't like you because um, the separate sense of someone is, um, <clears throat> it takes ownership of uh, thoughts, words, and actions so that, if you disagree with something I'm saying, you're actually, it feels like you're disagreeing with me. Can you see that? Yeah, I can see that. So I basically I'm interpreting their disagreement with what I'm saying as a non-acceptance or rejection of myself personally. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah. So um, once, you, once you see that, it becomes easier in itself. It's like, okay, maybe it's actually just a difference of opinion here everyone's got their own perspective etc but taking it one step further than that if you want to is um if i think they don't like me then it must be can only be a reflection of the fact that i don't like me because that person that i think is rejecting me is me and they're showing me that i still on some level at least don't like myself not an easy one to accept but if you can bring a willingness to could I still be rejecting my own self somewhere inside out of habit of course but a prevalent habit nonetheless that we all have yeah I can see that Helen and I've I'm aware of that and I have worked with that because I'm aware of that pattern that I don't like myself so um but have you ever met yourself? Have I ever met myself? Meaning? Have you ever actually just experienced you without thinking about you? I mean, look, as you're saying this, I'm getting the image of, you know, like the Louise Hay practice where you look at yourself in the mirror and say, I love you. Is that that's what's coming up in my mind as you say this and let's 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 be um maybe it'd be easy to to say uh when when i was at this point in my own awakening i realized i had all these negative opinions um on the best day i just slightly disliked myself on the worst day i absolutely hated myself and i was so convinced that that was true that what I thought was was true and it was actually quite shocking to realize um that all of my evidence the fact that I wasn't good enough wasn't likable etc was um from what I think about myself and that I'd never actually looked at myself without the filter of thoughts and mind so this powerful question came, what do I actually know about myself if I don't think? 
if I don't, uh, of course, mind might be thinking, but if I don't use thoughts as a reference point and the resulting emotions that come from those thoughts. So I'll ask you this. What do you actually know about yourself if you don't think about yourself? Nothing. So do you still dislike yourself? Then can you dislike yourself? From there? No, I can't dislike myself if I'm nothing. And what does happen if you don't know anything about yourself at all? How do you feel then? Peaceful, relaxing. Yeah. So can you see now maybe clearer what I mean when I say you've never really met yourself without looking through the mind at yourself? I've never met myself without thoughts. Yeah. And who are you without those thoughts? If those thoughts aren't used as a, uh, and, and the resulting experiences, the reflections in our in other people, like we were started this with. If I don't count the experiences I've had, which have all been reflections of what I think about myself, and I don't look through the mind just for a moment, and I actually ask, who am I, without any thought being used as evidence or whatever. We come to this without stunning thoughts, I'm just space. Say again, sorry. Without thoughts, I'm just space. I'm just openness. Yeah. And do you like yourself like that? Yes, it feels good. Anything to improve there? Not really. Not at all, right? You've been amazingly brave here. And I'm sure you're helping absolutely everyone right now here by bringing this up. So. It's just to be honest, right? I don't actually know myself. I've never met myself consistently without looking through the mind. And what's it like when I don't do that? Even now, let's take it one step further. Just look at your mind and body as they actually are without looking through the filter of mind. This is just a body here, right? There's just a body and there's thoughts. Yeah. Just a body. Yeah. Just base. Nothing to dislike there either, is there? That's true. So it's your choice then now. Now that you know you haven't really met yourself and your mind isn't, well, you have met yourself now, but... Um, your mind isn't the best and most reliable opinion to consult about whether you're good enough or not. That's all we're saying, isn't it? Your mind can't really see clearly, but you can. Yes. So you value this more than other people's opinions, which are echoes of what mind thinks. You value this more. You meet yourself directly. You value that more than you value your mind's opinions. Don't make the mind wrong. Just, okay, I can see it. Every time I look through that mechanism, it's always going to look like I need to improve myself. Yeah, this feels better. And the more you do it, the more, the more you fall utterly in love with yourself. Utterly. Besotted. Obsessed. And, you know, not in an ego way, but just wow, there's never been anything really that I needed to fix about me. And then other people have to begin to reflect that to you instead of reflecting what your mind thinks. I would like to add one thing, Helen. What I just asked you, I asked this because in the Sangha a few hours ago, one of the other members asked me to ask you this question and I wasn't that keen to ask, but what I'm feeling right now, what we did in this Sangha was something from your website about 
there is no, there's only one questioner, there's only one answer, there are not separate questioners. And um, so this person asked me to ask this question, which is also my question, and is everyone's question. So I think what you've, how you've just responded and what's just happened now is a perfect example of... There's the oneness. There's just the oneness there. Yeah. Thank you. You can tell from my answer that I've had to do this too, you know? We, we all spend as long as we spend trying to fix ourselves from some wrong image that comes through perceiving ourselves through the mind and mind's never going to be able to see you clearly only you can mm. so as you get that it becomes a simple choice of which if I'm suffering I'm looking through the mind right now at something at myself or someone else if I'm not suffering I'm just actually directly being with myself Thank you, Helen. Thank you for asking that. 